Hello and we're live. Welcome to tonight's Lancashire the Forum, Run from the East. I'm Emily. I've got Stuart Watson here who's going to be doing comments. We've got Willie. Say hello, Willie. Hello, Rod. Hi, everybody. We've sorry I Mark. haven't been here. Sorry mm -hmm. I haven't been here in a while, but I'm here tonight. So. Yes. I know everyone wants to see you, Willie. So that's it. <laughs> you are. <laughs> Uh, we've got Paul, who's going to be doing a live story. Want to say hello, Paul? Hello, everybody. <laughs> we've got Corey from Jets Gym and Ben from Jets Gym that are going to be talking about any offers that they've got going on in Accrington. Want to say hello? How's it going? Hi, guys. Okay. Um, so Lancashire User Forum is a safe space for people with drug and alcohol addiction, mental health, anything like that, uh, where... You can find out what's going on in the community and get some support. So we're going to uh, kick it off. Corey is going to um, tell us a bit about himself and his journey um, and obviously about the, the gym. And then Ben um, will come in and talk about um, there's an offer, a membership offer for people in recovery. So I will give the spot to you, Corey, and you can take it away and tell us what... Um, what you want to tell us. Okay, um, so I think I'll go into my addiction and how fitness changed my life. It's probably the best part. Um, so I think I was addicted to amphetamines for about a year and a half uh, in my teens. I think it came from a sense of not belonging. Um, went to about six different primary schools as a kid. Uh, so I was a bit of an outcast. And the people I did end up clicking with were drug users um so i yeah about a year and a half um found no sense of belonging whatsoever um didn't really have anything to do in life any college or education wasn't important to me um and then i found fitness um about five six years ago um and that changed my life i wanted to get back into sport um attended a gym for about two years and then decided to take it up as a career. Um, so I went to college, learned how to be a personal trainer and then went to university to learn sports science. Um, went to a couple of gyms, worked there, made a little bit of money. But since going to Jets, my career has really taken off, uh, making better money, the community is better. Um, the clientele is a lot better. Uh, the quality of work's a lot better. Um, I'm happy, I feel like I've, I've got my dream job at the moment. There'd be no reason for me to go back to what, you know, what I used to be. Um, yeah, basically all of it. <laughs> so did you, did you have to do, did you do any like rehab or detox or did you get any support yeah. around like the drug use or was it something that you <laughs> managed to do on your own? Um, so I didn't get any rehab or anything. Um, I was living with my pet, well, my mum at the time, my sister um, and a boyfriend at the time. Um, they kind of just like saw me go from like a happyish kid to like the complete opposite in quite a quick time. I was spending like full weekends outside, work coming back. When I was coming back, I was spending like days on end in bed. I didn't look myself, I didn't see myself at all. So my mum kind of like got it out of me. And um, luckily, you know, I listened to her um, and she kind of helped me get off them. She didn't really know it was in a full-on addiction at the time. She thought it was just like a one-off, but, you know, it was a full-on thing. It was very hard for me to get off. Um, but she helped me. Luckily, you know, I got through it in the end. So really, like, Jim, Jim was like your lifeline, I suppose, as you're saying. It's like... Yeah, because I was like... My future was, like, hanging in the balance for quite some time. Like, I was often, but it, I could have easily gotten back to that. Um, but fitness, as soon as I got into it properly, it was like my you know, my calling card, if you will. Um, I never looked back since, to be honest. It's the perfect thing for me. It might not be everyone's cup of tea, but it definitely helped me. And I've seen it change a lot of people's lives um, over the years. You know, people end up completely different, a lot happier, a lot more content with themselves. Um, obviously, there are people with addictions that still go to the gym, but, um, you know, when it's full on recreational drug, drug use, it definitely helps you focus, focus on that rather than, you know, the latter really <clears throat> yeah that's good though i mean well done so how long have you been clean and off since my teens um you know i think it was about 15 16 so quite a while 
you know, I've had certain bounce backs and stuff. Um, I've had quite a few traumatic uh, moments in my life that have almost made me go back to that. But um, instead, I point myself towards the gym and that keeps me on track. So, you know, maybe for like the past five years now, I've been, I've, I've not even looked at anything like that just because I've got a goal now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, do you know what? That's fantastic. That well yeah. done. You know what I mean? Like you say, though, a lot of people do like the gym. It's like that. The is it end? What do you call it? Endorphins. The, the, yeah, the endorphins. That's it. Yeah. It, it, it is. It's an addiction in itself, but I guess it's a positive one. Um, yeah, definitely. You know, changing your physique, improving your fitness. It's something that needs to be maintained twenty four seven. You can't just do it four days out of the week. You've got to do it all the time. So. Um, it has to be a constant thing to the point where you don't really have time, you know, to do other things that might harm your body. Because if you are focused on fitness, if you was to go back to anything like that, it'd take it all away from you in, you know, in the space of a week. I've got a lot of friends that have been drug addicts. I've, I've got them into fitness. They've bounced between the two. And every single one of them have turned around to me and said, look, I can only do one. If I go back to the drugs, maybe like six months of work in the gym it just gets snatched away from you so I tell my clients if any of them are you know you know former drug users or frequent drug users you know you need to stop if you want this to work because you can't do both so no. you know a lot of them turn around and say look I'm going to pick fitness it makes me happier and um, you can't balance them so I like you know it's 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 impossible to tell someone just get off the drugs now and don't you know just stick to fitness it takes them a while to work out which one they really want uh, but when they realize that they make progress with with me or anyone in, at jets um they they start to neglect the the, the heavy drug use all the time so it, it does help you know absolutely like you say you don't see anyone getting arrested for going gym do you but and also <laughs> there's nothing positive about drinking drugs is it, it it's never a, usually a happy ending is it you know there's not like you don't look yeah. Don't see people going, oh, you look really well. What what drugs are you taking? Oh, you look amazing. But if you start, like you say, you're in recovery and you're doing things like the gym and things and eating properly, then people notice and then it makes you feel better. It makes you feel more positive and, and people notice that and they recognise it. It's like, oh, you know, and it, it, it is, it, it's, a, it's a positive. So so are you, um, so are you uh, like one-to-one, -one, do you, personal trainer? Is that what you do? Yeah. So, yeah, I'm a... Uh personal trainer and performance coach um getting back into strength and conditioning soon um you know I try and pick people that I've had a bit of a bad time in their lives so I can kind of like you know apply my past to them to give them the incentive to move on um I always say if I, if I got through it any anybody can I know it's quite a cliche thing to say but you know I felt hopeless in my time um and I'm really starting to make some of myself now so um, yeah it's true though you know you inspire other people don't you and I think when people I know that I always found in recovery I always went to people that had been through the same thing as me I sort of that that was something that I because then I thought well they really do understand you know yeah for me sitting talking to someone who's just read a lot of books and got a lot of degrees but I've got no life experience and don't yeah. have a clue I found that exactly. hard so like yourself you're helping people who you can empathise with because you've been there. And, and like you say, it's like you give people hope, don't you, that it yeah. can be done. So yeah. I think that's really positive. Um, yeah. There's a lot of people watching. We've got Emma G. Oh, I wonder why Emma G's on here. Where are Emma G? Francesca Addict, Jackie Tierney. Is there any comments, um, Stuart? I'm afraid I can't find anything here in the section that I'm looking at. I don't know whether my uh, other version of uh, this event is streaming through a bit late. Well, but the last to... comment I can find is the one where I'm saying, can we have questions and comments, please? Well, there's a lot of people. We've got people watching them. We've got Chris Rollins, Kerry Bow, Gary Parker, Dom Ashworth, Trevor Abraham. Trevor Abraham is, um, so he's Brave Faces UK. He's, in, he's a lot of um, sports and events and he's in contact with a lot of like, Ricky Hatton is doing like a lot of sporting events, boxing events, and that's to raise awareness for men's mental health. Um, it's really, really good. We're going to try and get Trevor on at some point um, and, and have a chat with him. But um, Corey, do you and Ben want to tell us then what um, 
is going on with Jet's gym and explain a little to the people that are watching. So we're currently in the middle of an ex uh, extending the gym. Um, we want to give more opportunities to people that you know we have, that have different fitness goals. So we've got a women's only gym coming in there, um, like a CrossFit section where I'll specialise. Um, people that may want to you know come from average jobs to athletes or potential athletes. Um, we've got boxing areas coming in, more machinery for weight training, more cardiovascular equipment. Um, ben, do you want to tell the people about the prices and stuff? Yeah, of course. Hi, guys. Hope everyone's all right. Hi, um, Ben. So currently... Ah, you're all right, buddy. Yeah, I'm okay. Currently, um, we've worked with people in the past, such as like Inspire, and uh, we are currently working with Accrington Community Trust as well. Um, so the one thing that we did do with Inspire is a membership very similar to the one that we're offering here, which is going to be situated around £15 a month, which actually is £10 off a month as well. Um, and when we did this with Inspire back in 2018, I believe it was, December 2018, uh, it worked really well. Um, it got a lot of people bonding and obviously exercise does help release those endorphins. So a lot of the people that Inspire have brought to us have um, actually stayed members, even though their course is now done. Um, so even to this day, you know, three years down the line, we're still seeing those smiley faces come in. And it's really good to see that um, we've helped them battle that kind of addiction and start getting them into fitness, start making them happy and stuff. Um, with our extension coming as well, this, this £15 a month is an absolute steal for anyone who's who's looking to battle any kind of addiction, get in the gym, get smiling. We're looking to help these people out just as much as anyone else. Um, you know, we can book out rooms for them. We can make classes for them. We can get them all talking. We can provide exercises on them, what to do. Even like the smaller things, such as like little bits of, oh, eat this if you want to get healthier. Eat this if you want to get healthier. Um, but yeah, like I say, we're just looking to help them and just get them smiling. Once they've finished their exercise as well, we also have like um, big individual cubicles. So if people are like ashamed to have suffered or anything like that, they have any blemishes or marks that they don't want people to see, our cubicles are actually individual. Um, so they can just go in there. There's a big walking shower in there as well. Um, so they are available to take a shower with as well. It's 24-hour access and you do get an access card. It's going to be the biggest gym in Accrington. And obviously we've got the friendliest staff. The best equipment, it all comes with Spotify, YouTube, Netflix. So if some people have like comfort songs as a coping mechanism, they could just pop their headphones into the treadmill and uh, they'd be able to listen to that comfort song and just get along with the exercise, you know, nice and happy and listen to what they think helps them. Oh my yeah, God, you might, you, that could attract me. I could be sat. Do you know what? That sounds so good. That, do you know, like, it just sure, doesn't it, that you've really thought about this? You've thought about all the, like you say, the privacy, because people might feel body shame and all that. And, and then about, like, the music, listening to music to help you feel back. You've, like, literally thought it all through. Someone's asked where the gym is. It's in Accrington, isn't it? Near, um... Yeah, it's just next to the cinema, just under the viaduct. Um, I'm really interested in this, um, Ben. Um, I'm going to the gym like um, every two days and swimming every day as well. And I'm paying like yeah. £27.50 a month for that. Um, yeah. So I'm going to look in about the gym with you. Yeah, if you put with, down, buddy. Uh, yeah, with me we'll carers. We'll sign you up, we'll sign yeah. you up and we'll give you an access card. Um, yeah. Like I say as well, if you ever do end up busy through the day, it's 24 hours. You're not going to be in a changing room surrounded by other people. You, you're not going to be waiting for equipment because we don't have queues. We also have like a, it's it's like an app, a mobile app, and it's yeah. kind of what we call the Jets Facebook. So yeah. at any given point, you can uh, book into the gym and you can see how busy it is. So if you're a person who's quite anxious and doesn't like big crowds, if you just use our app, you can actually see how many people have booked into the gym. And if that's something you're looking to avoid, come at the quieter time. Yes. That's, I think that's this, good. This... That's very good for people with mental health, isn't it, really? Yeah, it's and the addiction. And we're always there to speak. Yeah, and addiction and that, you know. 
some people might just want to stay in their own little bit, you know, you know what I mean, don't you? Yeah, yes, of course. So it'll be good for them, it'll be good for them. Um, Actually, we can book out rooms as well for people so that yes. if they do want to come down together, we can book out a room and they can either do their own thing, but we're more than happy to um, yeah. to show them the ropes and get a little class going for them. That's brilliant, that. Stuart, did you want to say something, Lovey? Yeah, I was just uh, going to say there's a couple of comments, but before that, I could just say myself, I've been to Jets Gym. I, I took up that offer about three years ago. Uh, unfortunately, interrupted slightly by a heart attack, but that wasn't uh, Jets Gym's fault. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> but it is a great gym. The actual setup of the gym is really, uh, it is user friendly. The first part you yeah. walk in is basically just the machines, treadmills, bicycles, where you can plug your headphones in, watch a bit of TV. Then you've got sort of semi weights and machines, and then like the hardcore section at the back. So I would say to anybody who wants to go to the gym, uh, you know, to Jet's gym, go there. It's, uh, I can give it a, a high recommendation. Well, we've uh, got. Um... Shaz has just put, I want to go to Jet's gym, but I've been too anxious about going. Well, Shaz, you know, Ben's just said it himself. There's, you know, it facilitates all that. There's, you know, private uh, cubicles to get changed. You know, yeah. you can put your music on. She can also, she could use our app and just see when the gym's busy. And if, she, like I say, you know, there's times today where we've had one, two people in the gym and it's been honestly dead. Um, there are times like that that are perfect for people who are anxious. Um, so she, we would give her access to the app and she could just have a look if the gym's not busy, pop herself down Yeah, because you see I always have this thing of like women in active wear and I don't want to go in and be stuck in active wear and then they get go off in the Range Rovers, I know it's bad I know I shouldn't do it but that's just me and I think yeah, they've got their active wear on the, and I, I don't want to be around all that so I'd be same, I'd be anxious and I'd be thinking, oh, yeah. God, everyone's looking at me. But they, I know they don't. They're not that bothered. They're just there to, to train, aren't they? But no, everyone's that... there for a reason. If everyone was happy, then they wouldn't be in the gym. Well, no. No, that's true. Um, uh, we say to a lot of people... Somebody say... from Preston asked, uh, do, do you have any sort of premises there? Uh, we don't have any premises in Preston. However, we do have them in places such as like Wigan, Skipton, Brixton. Um, we're also situated across to like Thailand and Holland um, wow. and if you do sign up with us your access card will allow you to any one of those gyms as well but unfortunately we don't have one in Preston right now so that's me off to Thailand yeah. see you later uh, yeah. <laughs> and um, that's you and you and Jeanette apparently have to wash your lycras before you go there yeah I know anyway. Kim's put get your active wear at Emily Kim's my next door neighbour I'll have a chat with her about that after uh, Kim's book sounds like a fantastic gym, inclusive and non-judgmental. Well done. Joe, Joe Red Rose has put, um, is there a separate room for women and their gym? Um, so with our extension, there is going to be a women's only gym in which obviously only the women can go in there. Um, our extension does start in two days time and it will be done by the third week of November. So it's a really quick turnover. Um, so yeah, currently... We're just in the process of getting that done and getting that women's only area opened up for everyone. Brilliant. Paul, did you hear that? It's women's only. Don't be trying to get in with gym skirt or out like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> with tennis balls in your top trying to pretend. Yeah. Um, has put, does this gym help with previous health, i.e. post-strokes or people that have had strokes and things like that? Do, do you help with, do you do like particular programmes for people who have suffered health um, problems i think it, it it we'd be able to administer a program it would require a lot of um you know we have to be with them a lot um if they come in and we speak to them we could maybe get something done for them um it just depends you know on the severity how long ago it was etc yeah but we do we do have that knowledge in the gym so if, if they do come down and ask to speak to myself um we could maybe work something out for them. And with that on the Jets uh, gym's tours here, I would say directly to Shazza, is that the one uh, near Oswald's Whistle? 
Uh, I've forgotten what it's called. The uh, big health centre stroke gym. There, they do do specific ones because I'm going to start one for my uh, heart training. Yeah. So, so the offer is so it's fifteen pound a month. Is that it's, set, sorry? It's going to be 50, it's going to be fifteen pound a month. Yeah. Um, preferably, we, we kind of um, would like to push it in like a three month block kind of thing. It's going to help them because it's going to make them come because they've paid for it. Um, and it's also just going to help us with the hugely discounted price. If that isn't possible, then we can leave it at monthly. But preferably, we would like to push it into that three-month block. So it'll be £15 a month for the first three months. Is that right? Well, it will It will keep the rate. Um, yeah. It's just that we'd, it, we'd like to do it in like a, a three-month block kind of thing. Right, okay, that's cool. I'm sure you'll have lots of people. You, I, you might even get me become a member. I just don't know. I don't... You should come. We do um, free trails, so if there is anyone who's unsure, um, they can just pop down and try the gym out for a day for free. So that's including yourself. If you're a little bit unsure, just pop down and participate in one of our free trials and we'll see what we can do for you. God, I'm going to be even fitter and um, you know what I mean? Then I already am. I don't know if it's possible, but it, <laughs> will they stop laughing so loud like that? Oh no, thank you so much. And Shaz has put, I will be there. Thank you. There's a lot of people here that are. Um, I know you'll be there, Emily. I thought I might be now. Um, you know. we've, we've got who's watching? We've got Anthony Stark here. Yes, yes, Paul, my man. Yeah, hell, Paul. Is that one here for you? Kim, no excuse now, Emily. Yeah. Uh, Carla Shaw is watching, Chris Rain, who else have we got? Sandra Williams, I will catch up guys, Jeanette Gerard. we've got Joe Duffield, who else have I missed anybody? Michael Butler, the butler's in the house, Sheila Roach, laughter is good for the soul, Emily, you provide that in buckets, thank you very much Jeanette, don't know if that's laughing at me or, well thank you very much Corey and Ben. No problem. If you want to stay on, you're welcome to stay on. If you need to get off and do other things, then that's fine. Uh, but no, we're really, really grateful. And I'm sure you'll get a lot of people because that is like that is a bargain, really. £15 a, a month, that's because it's pretty expensive yeah. to join the gym. Oh, yeah. that's what I was going to ask. Do you have like um, saunas or anything like that? Or it's, it isn't, it's not like... Not yet. Uh, we currently um, don't have that is the plan. But we're looking to bring them in. Yeah. We'll be that's doing that maybe in about a year and a half, something like that. Right, that's, yeah, no, that just that was just a general question because some of the gyms, they have like saunas and steam rooms and all that, don't they? But no, yeah. that's that's great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank no you. Problem. All right, thank you. For Thanks very much. Bye. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thanks Bye. Bye. We've got lots of people on here now. So, um, Stuart, do you want to introduce, uh, we've done a little video of what's been going on in the community in Accrington. Um, so we've done like a little video. I've got a bit of a Queen theme going on this week. I don't know. I like Queen. So um, we've done a little video. Stuart's going to share it, <clears throat> hopefully. And it's just like little bit snippets of like the gardening project that we've got going on at St. James's. Cara, one of our volunteers, has set up a group, Five Ways to Wellbeing. And she also did a boxing match um, and won. She yes, Cara. She smashed it. Me and Willie were there. She smashed it. All over the place. Oh, yeah. Well, um, what... Yeah, and um, I've been doing the community cafe at Mickey Morgan's. So it's just a little bit of a, just a little video of everybody. So are you ready? To, are, you, are you ready? Are we going to try? I am. I'm hoping I'll be able to do this without you having to swap to hosting uh, the host to me. What? Oh, do I have to? Oh, don't do this. No, wait until I'll try this and see if it works. Oh, gosh, what have I done? Can you see the screen or not? Yeah. Well done. Yeah. You can, can, right? Yeah. Good stuff. I paid my dues Time after time I've done my sentence But committed no crime And bad mistakes I've made a few I've had my shells and kicked in my bed But I can't prove It's gone on, 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 on We are the champions, my friends And we'll keep on fighting Till the end 
fortune and everything that goes with it. I thank you all, but it's been no bed of roses, no pleasure cruise. I consider it a challenge before the whole human race. We are champions. I picked that song because we are, and this is where my passion, okay, champions, because I tell you what, it takes courage, strength, and determination to be in recovery, sitting with all that feelings and all that stuff and literally pulling yourself apart to work out why you take drugs and drink and, you know, why we do this. So I just think we are absolute champions. And like you say, we're an example, all of us sat here now on this platform that you can recover and you can get better and that takes me on to paul so paul is going to do his life story and i've never heard this so i'm um i don't want to say i'm excited because i don't but i'm intrigued to find out your journey paul so i'm going to let you take it away and i'm sure you're going to get loads of love now because you are a popular guy so i'll let you take it away my love all right hello everybody i'm paul um, do you know what? I'm dead nervous now, yeah? Do you know, I went to um, I went to one of them coffee mornings that you do, Emily, didn't you? And uh, you asked me this question as you was passing me like a bacon butty and a cup of tea, right? So I'd have said yes to literally anything if you're passing me a bacon butty. And now I'm thinking, oh. Um, but yeah, I'll do my life story. Um, I, I think if we go back to the start, my first ever memory is getting took into care um that's 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 my first memory we got we got took into care under some quite horrific um situation there was a man and he um he, he smashed my my baby sister's head open she was a newborn literally smashed her head open on a bunk bed and 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 that's my first memory like the blood on the walls my mum crying the blue lights the social services and and that sort of set uh that that started wheels like turning that so then when we was in care, you know, getting passed around and, and things like that, care care wasn't um, care wasn't a great place in the eighties, to be honest with you. It, it was hard, and that I I think I've always felt different from then. I was always in care, always. I didn't have that love off a of mother. I didn't have love off a of father, um, and and yeah, that sort of. I think looking back now, that made me quite quite bitter as a kid, quite angry as a kid, to be honest with you, like. I always, I wanted to be bad. Like that, that's literally, that's what I wanted to be. I wanted to be naughty. I think I was, I was probably like fighting out against the world or something, but I can remember as a kid, you know, a lot of people saying, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to be? And honest, honestly, like my biggest ambition, I wanted to go jail. That, that was like, that seemed like the big thing at the time. Do you know what I mean? I want to be in prison. I want to do all them things. Um, so yeah, growing up, growing up was it was quite tough. I was I enjoyed being naughty. I was I was in like with the naughty crowd, you know what I mean? And um and we started on drugs quite young. So we started, you know, with like solvents, we were sniffing petrol out, jerry cans and things like that. And and I had that connection when when I was when I first started taking drugs and it was hash back then, we were smoking hash and smoking mix and stuff like that. I felt like 
that was the answer. That that was the piece that was missing. The people that I was with it was all high as fuck. I thought this, this is where I belong. This is home. Like I love drugs from a young age. Like I love what they did to me. I wanted to be on them. I wanted to be on them all the time. Do you know what I mean? And um, and it, so yeah. So then it sort of like it, it it progressed from there. You know, we started on the the petrol, the gas, the hash, the drinking, all them things. And um, when I was, when I was fourteen, so I come out of care at fourteen, and we found my mum, and I went to live with my mum, and was living on probably what's like known as probably like. You know, it's the hardest estate in the, it's, it's a hard estate to live on in Derby. Um, a lot of drugs, and especially like, especially in them times, like heroin seemed to be everywhere. Heroin and crack, it, it was just absolutely swamped on the estates. Um, so it was only really a matter of time before we sort of came into contact with with Class A drugs, and, and my drug use had progressed. You know, like I, I was on it all the time. You know, I'd got expelled from school. Um, a similar story to a lot of people, a lot of like naughty kids and that. Do you know what I mean? Um, I, I don't want to ramble. I am a bit nervous. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. As as like we got older and I, I come out of care and my auntie, she's on heroin. Met my auntie, she's on heroin, and they was always doing bits and bobs with drugs. And heroin always seemed to be like obtainable for me it was always there do you know what I mean and you know dropping little bits off for my auntie here and there and and doing it and and I love that lifestyle at the time do you know like when you're young and you want to be a little gangster and you you think you're selling little five pound bits of heroin and ten pound bits of heroin or hash or something like that you think you're a gangster you're listening to Tupac in your headphones you're thinking this is my life do you know what I mean I'm, I'm living it um so yeah and then I can remember like by the time I was 16, I was sent, I was sent down. And I, I felt like I'd, I, that was my biggest ambition. By the time I was 16, I was in Glen Parva. And, and when, like, when we go to jail, there's, you know, there's a lot of lads that I already know in there. So it, were, it weren't a hard thing for me. Do you know what I mean? Like, and I, I, again, I felt at home there. I felt like this, this is the world that I belong in. Do you know what I mean? Um, and I loved it. I, I genuinely loved being naughty. I loved the not giving a fuck about anything the drugs, the burglaries, the stealing, the selling, all that. Um, I think as I look back now, it was, it, it was, a, it gave me such a sense of connection um, to all that. Like I was somebody, I belonged to something, you know what I mean? People knew who I was because I've done jail. You know, you get out of jail that day, you, you're the man for the day or on the estate and you've got the drugs in. And I think looking back now, it was always, it was love and affection and connection that I was looking for. It was just, I found it very easily, very easily in that place with with probably the rest of the people that was looking for the same thing as me. Do you know what I mean? We all sort of give it to each other. Um, and then, yeah, so so then like by the time I was probably 18, 19, I'd like my first real addiction to, to heroin. Heroin's been my drug of choice all the way through this. I've had lots of other drugs and that, but heroin for me. That was that was really that was like that was my wife. I loved heroin, you know. Um, and when when I first when I first got on heroin, it was it was a lot stronger back then than it is today. Really, a lot stronger, and it absolutely it wrecked me. It took over it took over my life, you know. Um, and I could I can remember like I'd go to like the depths on my first daughter, like, and it's not easy to say, but I can remember looking, you know, on Christmas Day, I can remember looking at the Christmas presents that she's opening, that she's not really play, playing with, that people might not see has gone to cash generator for a little while. Do you know what I mean? And I'm, I'm always looking for money. And I was, I'd, I'd, I'd have took off anybody back then. If I, if I, if I need gear, like my morals was absolutely out the window. I'd burgle anybody. I'd take anything off anybody, including my own children. Um, yeah, it really, it really fucked me up. Them first couple of habits, in, in and out of a habit, you know, I didn't have any rehab, no, like, theory of, like, recovery or anything like that. I, whenever I wanted to get off drugs, I just wanted to get off drugs. I didn't want to be in, in recovery. I didn't want to do all that. I thought if I could just get off the heroin, my life would be normal and that again. Do you know what I mean? And I went through quite a period of that, you know, in and out of jail, in and out of jail, drugs. I'd be clean for a little while, and when I, but when I say I'm clean, you know, I'm sniffing coke or I'm drinking too much. There, there always had to be something because 
like I like to think, I like to think in my head that I've you've always been quite a confident guy, but actually I'm not. Like if you take away the drink and the drugs from me, I'm an absolute wreck. I'm dead self-conscious. I'm all, even like now, you know, I'm still getting used to living clean. I can feel myself self-conscious. Like it'd be a lot easier if I'd four Stella here and I'd be like blaring on, do you know what I mean? Because that's what drug and drinks gives me. It gives me a false sense of, of who I am and, and, it, and it helps me. So, so yeah, in and out of jail, in and out of jail, doing nothing with my life. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely nothing with my life. A lot of people on my estate, I was looking around, we was all doing the exact same thing. That, that was the, that, that was just the norm. Do you know what I mean? Not many people had jobs, not many people that I knew, you know, everyone was either stealing or selling or, you know, we, we was all fuckers on, on that estate. It was, it was, you know, quite a rough place to live. Um, and then, yeah, so, as it, it's gone on like that for a, a long time, a long time, probably like 15, 20 years on and off the gear, on and off the gear. When I'm off the gear, I want to be on it. When I'm on the gear, I want to be off it. Like, you know, really couldn't, really couldn't get my head around it. And then, so about six years ago, I went to, um, I went to my first rear and it was a 12 step rear. Um, and even then, like, I didn't want to be in recovery. I knew nothing about recovery. They sent me there and I knew nothing about recovery. It was all like a learning thing. And it was a 12 step recovery program. Um, and I couldn't see myself as an addict. I could not see myself as an addict whatsoever. Like, I'm going into meetings. And, I'm, and by this point, like, from like probably 28 to say 34, something like that, 27 to 34, you know, I wasn't injecting. I'd start learning how to live with my addiction. So I've always tried to, I always look a bit of a judgmental smacker, to be honest, you know, because like I'd learned like just to smoke it. I learned that to work, to sell a bit, to, to just be dodgy, you know, try and stay out of jail, you know, and sort of try and keep some sort of hold of it. But yeah, when I went to, um, so that's all like when I went to the rehab and I was going into meetings, I was just looking around the room and I was just thinking, well, I'm not you. I'm not you. I've never like sat in doorways. I've never like begged. I'm always looking for that difference. Do you know what I mean? And I think I hated myself for being an addict for quite a long time. Like I wouldn't admit, I know that I have a problem with heroin and things like that, but I'd always look for the differences. Do you know what I mean? I'd always, and going into them rooms, I was like, well, I've never begged. I'm not, I'm not this, I'm not that. I always like blagging in my own head that, um, that I could be different. Do you know what I mean? I don't need recovery. I just need to get off the gear even though I've done that like 20 times previously and it's never just worked, you know what I mean? Um, so and I, when I come out of that rehab, I didn't do no meetings or anything like that. And I stayed quite, I stayed good for quite a while. Do you know what I mean? I was, I was drinking at the weekends and smoking a bit of weed here and there. And I thought maybe I am different, do you know what I mean? Because this seems to be going quite well for me, to be honest with you. Um, and then slowly but surely, everything starts kicking back in, do you know what I mean? So I'm out drinking, so I'll have a little sniff. Everyone else is all right just having a little sniff, but I wait, I, I wait till everybody's like gone home and then I'm going out to buy heroin because I like to I need to come down. I can't be wired all the time. Um, and plus, I, I've always liked being in that. Like, there's a bit of me that likes going into them crack dens and being surrounded by absolute misery and, and the, the places are horrible. Everything about it's horrible and grimy. For some reason, there's a big part of me that always feels at home there, I can walk into a crack then and feel like, ah, do you know what I mean? No matter how shitty the place is. Um, so yeah, that, that didn't go well, trying to do it my own way, trying to like, I'll, you know, control my drinking and, and my drug taking and things like that. So then I went to rehab last year, it was a year ago, and I went up here and it wasn't a 12 step rehab or anything like that, but I think, I think age has played a lot of it as well, to be honest with you. Um, I'm 40 now, and I was just ready for that change. I was absolutely ready for, for that change and to change my life. So I went into this rehab, and my behaviours were still bad in that rehab. I got kicked out because of girl and the usual sort of stuff that happens in rehabs and all that. My behaviours was a bit, bit shitty towards the end. Um, but when I come out, I decided to relocate, move away from my hometown of Derby and come come up north and start start again. It, it was a really it was a really like difficult decision. It was it, it was really hard to to turn my back and and leave that life behind because that life's all I've known. I felt like I had a place there. 
for, for a little while up here, I didn't know what I was meant to do, didn't know where I was meant to be. I didn't even know who I was, do you know what I mean? I didn't have drugs and drink anymore. I didn't have dealing. I didn't have being dodgy. I didn't have all these things. Everything was stripped away from me. And I was like, shit, what do I, what do, I do now? Do you know what I mean? Um, but I, I chucked myself into it, you know, and, and my, life's, my life's like really, really different today. Really, really different. It's really nice. It's really chilled. I've got a lot of good people around me up here that, that care, do you know what I mean? And all throughout my life, it, I didn't want people to care. I didn't, I didn't care. I didn't care, do you know what I mean? It was fuck the world and its dog. I'll take these all on, do you know what I mean? I'll, I'll do what I want. And, and having people up here now that, you know, want to be around me, they, they challenge me when I need challenging and my behaviours are still slipping out. It, it's, it's an absolute blessing, do you know what I mean? Um, and it, it's still it's still quite hard up here. I'm still getting used to living clean and so, you know, it was so just over a year now um, and there's still certain things that come up for me. I still have to watch behaviours and all that. But I, I, when, I, when I've got into recovery before, like there's little bits and bobs that I've still wanted to keep. Do you know what I mean? I still want to be dodgy. I still want to do this. I still want all this, but I just want to be clean. And, and this time I sort of let go, let go of the whole lot of it. Do you know what I mean? Let go of all them past friends, all that little fucking want to be bad lad stuff. And, and when I do go back to Derby and I see my kids and things like that, it's funny because the people that I'll see, they're still having the same conversations as when I left. Do you know what I mean? Still talking about the exact same stupid crap that when I'm left. Oh, well, I'm behind on this pay. I need to sell this for this. And I need to, you know, this person owes me money and all that. And I think I see it from a very different like, perspective now. Um, I couldn't have done this on my own. Do you know, like I've, I've needed a lot of support to be able to do this. And it was hard, hard to get over myself and say that I need support. Because if you need support, it makes you sort of feel like a victim or all this. You know, it's really hard to drop that ego, that bravado strip it all back and actually say do you know what i'm proper broken like i'm broken emotionally i'm broken fucking spiritually i'm broken in a million different ways and i need help will somebody help me please that for me was really really hard because like i said i've i've grown up listening to tupac thinking blah, 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 and all this stupidness do you know what i mean um well yeah I wouldn't change my life for anything right now. Just started college. Um, I've just started getting back into the gym, started eating a bit healthier and that now, because that sort of goes, because you have to keep watching your behaviours. Do you know what I mean? I have to I have to constantly keep a little check of my behaviours. Um, and there's things that slip, there's things that go up, and, you know, but as I, as I get through it now, I'm starting to find my way, I'm starting to find my feet. I've got better friends up here now. When I do go back to Derby and see my kids, I've got friends from up here that will ring me on a daily and say, you all right? Are you keeping yourself safe? Not one of them friends from Derby that I've known for 35, 40 years has rang me while I'm up here. Oh, how's things, mate? How's things, Fitzy? You doing well? Well, it's nice to see you in college and all them sort of things. So that sort of goes to show me a massive amount. Do you know what I mean? And... And I'll, I'll just end on this, Do you know, like, so I was dead worried about moving up here and seeing my kids and things like that. And I have my kids up here. I have them for like week blocks at the moment now, which is challenging in itself. So I used to have them at the weekend and now I have them for a week. That's like, it's challenging. But our Grace turned around to me a couple of weeks ago when we was up here and she just turned around and she was like, don't never come back, dad. Don't never come back. And we was like, we was watching films. We had candles. It was a dead nice room. It was like, you know, early evening sort of thing. I'm just on my feet open. I could just sort of see that she was content. Do you know what I mean? It weren't like, oh, we need to jump in the car and we need to go to this place. We need to go to that place. Be da, da, da. I can just like proper sit and be with them now. Um, so, yeah, I, I feel like I've rambled a little bit, like jumped no. to a practical, but I'll leave it there. Um, Honestly, yeah. you've got loads, um, th there's loads and loads of comments. There's like love arts going flying everywhere. There's like, so I just, just one thing quickly though. So, right, so you're eating healthy. So that means that there's no bacon and egg butties now at the calf. <laughs> I come for that bacon and egg butty at the calf because that's good for my recovery. Oh, Don't sorry. take that away from me. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. my one treat of the week. I only come for the recovery. I didn't really want the bacon <laughs> sandwich. I just want to fit in and feel accepted. <laughs> That's fine. Stuart, do you want to make, there's loads of comments. Have you got them all? <laughs> there's so many, Paul. I think I'm going to struggle here to get through them, but we've got uh, 
Rianne says that, you know, amazing what you've done. Uh, Joe, from, that's Joe from Red Rose Recovery, backs that. Uh, Kim Wood, uh, Jeanette Gerard says, and I'll back her up on this, I need to hear these sorts of stories. Thank you. We might have had a different upbringing, but I'll add a bit to that is, but we all end up in the same place and often for the same reasons. Uh, Emma G says she met you in, uh, I think it was rehab. She's so proud of you and grateful to have you in her life. Uh, Cara, I think where is that gone? Right, she's put Freddie Buchholz very on this. Yeah, yeah. That's so many of them have to keep up with them, mate. Gary Parker, Lisa, Nicole, Bugs, go on, mate. Great story. I think that's one of the most uh, we've ever had for stories. And the and the viewings have gone like right, right up. Um, yeah. we've got Dom Ashworth, top man, mate. Um. Emma G, yeah, uh, well, hold on. Nigel Clegg, great story, very similar to mine. Loads of identification. Lisa Nicole, massive hugs and love to you. Gary Parker, go on, my mate. This is what I mean. When you start sharing your story, other people can like little glimpses and think, yeah. And like when you're saying about you, your children, when they say to you, yeah, don't don't go back to that, you, you think, oh, I can help. When they, my, my kids can now see mum getting better and mum's, mum's in recovery, mum's doing well. When they've not got the police banging at the door and watching mum get trailed off in handcuffs and kicking and screaming and when i've got men at me i was beating the shit out of me and my son's having to pull me out all that mayhem just to have your parents in at peace with a cup of coffee a few broken biscuits sorry i had to mention that and just at peace and you do it's nice isn't it you 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 wake up knowing you've not hurt anybody <clears> you've <throat> not harmed anybody you're not sat in that shitty fucking place you know, of, of addiction you know that that moment then when I when I had with Grace, because Grace is like 14, so she's going like through that stage where she's like, you know, she don't want to be cuddled anymore. She, she thinks she's a big woman and all that. So I didn't press her, like, but I shared that moment with her. I knew exactly what she meant. I, I could see like how content she was, just feet up, snacks, watching films. And she just turned around and says, don't never come back, Dad. Don't never come back. And I thought, I, just, I didn't even say anything. I thought, I get, I get exactly what you mean, my princess. Exactly. And Emma's just put that you've helped so much with her son. I mean, that's like a comedy act. That is like <laughs> a pop, pure comedy act. You know what I mean? And it's and true. A privilege. And a privilege. And, you know, honestly, you've got so much that oh, there's, there's loads. And you the need to come here more often. Still flying as well. You need to come on a bit more often, I think. You've become um no, thank you so so much, honestly. And like like you say, it, it helps people identify and it gives people a little glimmer of hope. There's people on here that will not be in recovery but I've got a lot of friends and a lot of connections and I'll say just jump on come and watch it see what it's about and they do and sometimes just a little bit of something might just make sense so like I say it's not abstinence based people can come in here and, and still be actively using it's just that knowing that there is people out there that understand and there is groups and there is support and that you know we, we can all get we can get clean and we can have um, a better life Joe's just put what an inspiration you are all that you are going and still going through recovery, it just proves recovery works. And you just being on that recovery platform is a life changing, is life changing to your mental health and your life. Well done. Keep it all. Keep up in all you are doing. Like you said, you were nervous. I did when I first did mine. I was like, oh my God. Oh, and Kyra's put lots of love, Paul. And yes, I probably won't say that again. <laughs> Cheers, Kyra. <laughs> you know what I mean? Kyra's like hardcore, like. So, no, thank you so, so much. And if you want to stay on, you can. If you want to go off, you can. And But you've had no, lots no. of love. And the viewings have, like, gone right up. Thank you. You're welcome. Right. Um, Stuart, right, so we don't have a singer, but we have, in a way, because um, Stuart's written this song. So this song that's going to come up in a minute, the words are on it, are on the screen. Stuart has written this song. Um, and did you play the guitar to this have you done the music yeah i played everything except the drums and uh, the vocals so um so someone else is doing the vocals but we wanted to share this because it just shows that you know people in addiction and recovering that, that there's a lot of talent there is a lot of talent um i've not quite found my talent yet but anyway i'll find it somewhere but we've all got yeah. these things we... 
You're here at your talent, Emily. That'll, that'll do. I love that. Um, so, Stuart, are you going to try again and share? We're going to try again. Um, and then we're going to come to the lovely Willie. We're <clears> waiting for this. that. Yeah, I won't forget you, Willie. Don't you worry. Yeah. Right, good luck, Stuart. Yeah. 
Stuart, tell us about that. So when did you write that and a little bit about it? As soon as that was uh, your I probably wrote that about 15, 20 years ago. It was, uh, I've suffered with anxiety and depression uh, and for most of my life and really taken anything, you know, legal that I could to try and help me get through those feelings and those horrible negative mental thoughts that you tend to uh, get. At the time when I was writing those songs, they were all very, very negative because that's who I was at the person, you know. But since then, I hopefully I went to rehab like uh, Paul did and come out of it a more positive person looking for the bright side. So now I'm just uh, rewriting the lyrics uh, to make them more about who I am today than who I was before. So I can tell my story about how, you know, bad it was, but come at the end and say, there is a silver lining. And that's one thing that I have learned from Rehab, Red Rose, you know, all of the, the people around Red Rose, yourself, Beverly, you know, so many people that I, you know, I, I couldn't possibly mention. Uh, but yeah, it's all about connection, community, and and hope. And that's what I would hope that song would, was saying to some people. It's not Tupac, but you know, it's. Uh, yeah, but do, do you know what? Jeanette's just put gobsmacked. My tendency to appreciating music is always lyrics, and you have smashed it. How would I get a copy, download, so, so brilliant, the lyrics so much my past, so hats off to a stunning, well, as I say, gobsmacked. Well, it's not like Jeanette to be gobsmacked, is it, and not have any words. Dan Little Child, hello, everyone. Hi, Dan. You've just deserted us, but it's all right. Don't you worry. Uh, Anna Stevens, amazing, Stuart, very talented. Judith, that's my mum, Mama Bear, brilliant. Uh, Dan, nice to see you, Emily, Stuart and Willie, and Wendy is watching. So, Stuart, honestly, that's awesome. That's what we've got. So we've got Stuart part two of that, but then I've got other songs as well that are Stuart's that we're going to try and um, play. Joe's put Stuart hats off to you, my friend. That has just made my day in music. Love you, Stuart Watson. Hey! Thank you. That, that, that's why I started to write music. I wanted to feel... Yeah, connected with people and have people feel connected to music the way I was as a kid because music helped me get through. And yeah, I'm, music I'm will doing, help all of us, won't it? Doesn't matter I, what music it is. I'm doing it, Stuart, at the moment with guitar. Yeah, yeah, learning oh, myself. That takes us nicely on to Willie. Willie, 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 oh, right, Willie. Sorry. We've all missed you, and do you know what? I've not seen you for ages and you know I needed I needed a fix I needed you know the, my happy fix needed that so you're here Willie tell us what you're going to tell us tell us what's been going on tell us how you have smashed your recovery yep about my recovery I'm just going to go through it as fast as I can from when I was a child okay. onwards and then out of that pretty quick into recovery at the end um when I was a child, I was going through mental health problems at the age of um, about six till 11. Um, I used to sleep in the dog's basket because I thought there was ghosts. Well, I, I seen ghosts. And I, when I slept in my own double, double bed in my own room all the time, I started seeing snakes in the air coming at me. And then we had these wardrobes with like glass on the top. I used to see faces all laughing at me and loads of voices coming out of it. So I used to go into my mum and dad's bedroom and um, if there was not enough um, room on the bottom of the bed, then I used to sleep on the floor. So my mum used to wake up and find me asleep on the floor. When I was in the dog's basket, it used to growl like mad at me. Um, through life... Um, I used to go to my granddad's and that lot. 
started hallucinating nursing spiders on the floor um, couldn't go to sleep always stayed awake frightened um, I come out of my bedroom one night there with my granddad and they had that painting if anybody knows about it the crying boy mm. um, and basically I was just sleepwalking all the time every night I was sleepwalking um, they couldn't get me to bed they find me in cupboards locked in cupboards or under something under a blanket somewhere anyway that went on for a while then as I got older um I kept up and I had ADHD as a kid um so it's a bit lively all the time you know talking a lot and um doing stuff um it's just my bad childhood was coming out of me so um, they give me medication for that and some medication to help me sleep as a kid. And um, basically, uh, from there, I went on to my teens. Um, they realised they had, um, like, a personality disorder, schizophrenia in um, prison when I first went to um, a young offender's prison. So I was getting treated in there. Um, I don't think, really, when it was in my 20s, not that they knew a lot about it is it was like they didn't know as much as they do now so you found yourself just in there on your own like pure paranoia in your head hearing things in yourself and you know it, it was horrible anyway when I got out of all that prison stuff and then um, growing up I used to take drugs all the time started on amphetamine didn't smoke cannabis much because it made me dead ill and sick and paranoid and I couldn't smoke it. Went on to amphetamines, injecting amphetamine. Um, I was running around. Maybe it wasn't a good idea, you know, with ADHD, doing amphetamine at the same time. Um, then I went on to heroin. Heroin was my drug of choice because it just blanked everything out. I had all these problems just coming into my head all the time. And... My mates were smoking heroin one time in the flat. I didn't even know what it was they were smoking. They said, you want to go? You feel nice and nice and calm, like. So I had to go, and I didn't stop after that. Every day I was just buying, 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 buying. And um, in life, I was robbing of anybody, burgling, um, through shop windows, through roofs of places, cars, shoplifting i was just going mad i had nowhere to go nowhere to live i was sleeping in um like cars in like maybe a park top that are, you know the play scrap places where cars go in that lot i'd get inside there to keep myself warm i'd get in bin bags and that when it was snowing and um, i was in one when i was so near christmas um, I've gone into the back of a solicitor's, slept in the porch in there. Um, there was a number of things I was doing, like, you know, and it was all hell. Anyway, I started going into hospitals from an early age as well, when all this was happening. The police were picking me up all the time and taking me into hospital under the section. Now, I didn't know what a hospital was then because I'd never been in one. And then the police took me up and they, they locked me in a room with handcuffs on and they stood beside me like, and a doctor come in and see me and she asked me loads of questions. And this is how it started off. And I was paranoid and um, I was hallucinating. I think like ghosts were chasing me. Oh, it was all happening. And um, they took me onto the ward. There were people on the ward. You could tell they were proper on well. Um, for all different, I'm not going to go into that, but all different reasons. So I went from hospital, 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 and I kept on moving around. All doctors got to know me. I'm sectioned for a few times, five years here, four years here, two years here, 18 months here. And it just kept on going on like that. And the last hospital I've just been in, um, it was a lockup hospital in Blackburn. And I was in the just over four years, I'd say, maybe, if I'm right. 
And then I've come to this place out here in the community now, and basically I'm in a home now, but I can do as I want. Not do as you want, but, you know, you can go out to town on your own. As long as they know you make, you feel okay and you're coming back for your medication, you know, they help you with, like, shopping, they give you food shopping and all that. Um, so people going through the system, if they get the right care, I'm saying, you know, they can get into a place where it'll really help them. And my drug addiction these days now, I've been off drugs, what, eight, nine years now. I haven't drank for five years. Um, what it was as well, there were, the last hospital I was in, last hospital I was in for um, like four years, I was going to um, the Red Rose and um, the loft meetings, like, when they were on. Um, I was sat on board one day on the hospital, and um, the guy come up to me, it does, like, a bit of gym and that, and he done, like, um, he went to, he was going to Red Rose with a couple of more lads, and he said, do you want, you want to come with me like that? And I thought to myself, I can't stand up and talk to people. So I went a couple of times. And I've seen people getting up at the front, you know, like um, doing speeches and that lot. And I used to think to myself for a couple of times, I used to think, they're saying stuff like me, you know. These people are going through what exactly I'm going through. And I need to tell these people the way I got out of that and got, not got myself, but ended up in a, a nicer place where I can cope in that better with 24-hour curse still, but left alone to do your own thing. And um, so I stood up and I did a speech in the loft meeting, right? And um, everyone was laughing their heads off, you know. I, I made everyone laugh and I, they made me feel welcome and everything. So every time I was, um, I come like, every time Loft was on and I come, and they all give me hugs, shake my hand, and, hey, Willie, you know, and it kept me going. It, keep, it kept, it just kept me proper, you know, happy in myself, knowing I was doing stuff for myself, knowing I'd get somewhere one day. And then I started doing the gym when I was in Kerr, in the last hospital, they had a gym there. I was doing a gym there, I slimmed down, hell of a lot, I used to be about 17 stone. Um, now I'm 16. Um, and I've been doing gym everywhere, and gym in Blackburn, swimming every day, gym every day, um, really pumping it. And um, as soon as I get the problem, like start thinking like, oh, I'm having a bad day today. And I think in my head, I still think, I'll be honest with you, I still think, oh, a couple of cans, you know. No, 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 you know. You know, it make you better, will it? And I'm like, ah, oh, nah. Nah, nah, nah. I'm not going down that road again. That is where it's going to lead me. That has lied to me time and time again after to me in my head that I will get away with drinking them cans when I know I won't. So I stood up for myself inside my head. You know, my head were telling me. So I, I told staff, like, you know, and I never got more medication. We got stuff to help me. And um, so if you're honest, I thought, you know, if you're honest, the way I've come out of it, if you're honest, they help you, you know what I mean? They will help you. You know, there's places you can go, Loft, Red Rose, Inspire. Um, but, like, People, I can't say the names, people in um, the Red Rose and people in the um, Loft know who they are, all team. i just like to say thank you for bringing me all this way, thanking me for standing up in front of people, giving me that power, putting me through speaker boot camp so I, I could address my feelings to a camera Um and, you know, I'm okay in life now. I've got my guitar. I've got my little mouth organ. I ordered one the other day. I've got my music. 
I just plug myself into my music, like um, Paul said. Today, um, that's why I was a two-pack and everything like that. I get it up on my YouTube, listen to two-pack, just chill out. Um, if I'm getting stressed, you know, maybe go down for a swim if it's still open. Go to the cinema, it's only £3.50 an hour. Um, so I've been doing a lot of stuff like that. Anyway, um, one of the managers here, he come to talk to me a while ago, and um, it was like um, to, go, to go to college, you know, university, to do like social work with people and stuff like that. And um, I did tapes with um, Lancaster University as well. Um, so, and I've done it with um, you, Clan in Preston. I've done talks here on mental health. Um, Campbellview, I've done talks on mental health to staff and doctors. Um, some doing the degrees in that lot in other hospitals. Um, my basic way is that I come out of all that. I know how hard it is because, you know, days go past, I'm laid on my bed. These these demons are hunting me, you know what I mean? But I'm just keeping them away, you know, and make a brew, have a fag, you know. It's not much, but chill out, you know. Put some music on it you love, you know. Write a book like I have done. I never thought I could write a book. There's no way. I, years ago, I, I could not write a book. Not even say three words, never mind write a book. Um. Emily's got me books, anybody wants a copy, um, about my life. And um, that's what I've got to say, like, back to Emily. We've got, <clears throat> Stuart, just show the book. I mean, you're that famous, Willie, anyway, everyone's probably seen this book, but if you just put it up. So that's that's Willie's book, Shattered Mirrors. I've got loads of copies if anyone wants a copy. How much are they, Willie? Is it £7.50? Yeah. And it all goes to Red Rose, back to charity, because Will is that kind that, you know, he didn't even, he just wanted to give it back to charity. Um, also, I think you can go online and get a copy of his book, but I've got lots of copies. Um, you were brought up in, where were you brought up, Willie? Um, Solcourt, Scotland. So, you know, you've, you've, you've come so far and now you, you know, when did you move over here, Willie? How old were you? Um, about 15, 14. Yeah, and your mum's like super proud. She usually tunes in. She's like so yeah. proud of you. Well, she's not visiting me in like prison or hospital, so you know, and she doesn't like it if I, you know, I, I go walkies or all like that because no. police, the police go to her house to um see where I am all the time. Exactly, and you are like it. one of my best friends. I have made such a beautiful friendship with you. Yeah. You know, you speak to me every day. You're checking on me every single day. You know, you you reach out. You help so many people. You inspire so many people. And especially when you talk openly about your mental health as a child. You know what I mean? So this wasn't yeah. started with drugs. This is something that you had as a child that yeah, you struggled no. with. And to be open about that, you know, and that, that takes massive strength. And the fact that you've overcome addiction and you know, you, you you talk about your mental health and about seeing things, because a lot of people don't like to talk about it. I got diagnosed with psychosis, and yeah. um, a lot of it was when I was under the influence of, of, of drink. You know, I, I used to believe all sorts of things were happening, but a lot of people don't, it's a lot of stigma, and people don't want to talk about that, do they? And, but you Not do, everyone. and you help people, and you've got David Simpson's, uh, oh, he's put Stuart Watson, rock star. Wendy, amazing. Calf done, well done, Willie. My mum again, Judith. Welcome, Willie. Love you. Oh, hey. It's off my mum. Um, Joe, Red Rose, Willie, you've done all this yourself, the hard work you've done, but Red Rose have supported you. You are a star, my friend. Bev Webster's watching. Dave Simpson, Willie's words of wisdom. Dave Grun Daz Grundy, well done, brother. Um, Joe, always love Willie's inspiration to recovery. He's a survivor in every step he takes in recovery. Uh, go Willie, you are amazing. Honestly, you've got so much love, and and again, the views go up when you are on. And my friend Cat Upley is watching. That's what I mean. I've got a lot of friends as well, probably like you, that are so proud that I'm 
in recovery and doing well because it probably yeah. makes the street a safer place because I'm not like kicking shit out of people and getting arrested. But that's <laughs> the story. Yeah, yeah. It's it's nice, you know, like you say, this is um this is the place and, and you are amazing, Willie. And like you say, you know, every day you're doing activities, you're swimming, you're going to gym, you're going to cinema, you're keeping your brain, you're keeping it. Yeah, you've got to keep on battling. It's hard. It is. But, my mum's just put, thanks, Willie, for always checking on Emily, because my mum worries about me still, you know what I mean? She knows the, yeah. the madness, the, the mayhem. We'll be all right. We will all be okay, because we've all Every, got each other. All a lot of us. Absolutely, absolutely. I was going to, right, so before we finish, so I, I, I've got this, so on a, I do a women's group on a Thursday by Zoom, and I always play, like, little songs for women to inspire them. And, the, and the, there's one song, right, that... I find, I've got to try and share my screen though, so you're just gonna to have to bear with me. But it's for everybody. So one minute, one minute. If it all goes, it's all gonna go tits up. I know it is. Right, one second. I'm a back. Right, just give me a second. It's gonna take a while. Just talk among yourself. You just talk, Willie. Have a chat. Is everyone okay? You are right, <laughs> Paul. Yeah, do you know what, Willie? I thought I thought that was a brilliant story, right? And do you know what? You're right. Like, I don't think you can under understate how much you know. Like, mental health's only really come to the forefront these last few like years, really. Do you know? Back in the in the early nineties, the late eighties, oh, it? No, it? it was there was just no, and even in prisons, like when I was in young offenders, they just they didn't cater it. for anything like that. No, yeah. no, they would, they would just put you in a cell and, and take you out of society. Off. Yeah, but I, the, I think shut the door, won't it? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Just put you behind the door. Make sure you can't like bother society. But you know, to come through that, that, that that's an absolute fucking soldier, mate. To come through the yeah. mental health that you have to battle every day. Do you know what I mean? And and I do. I think you know. I think it's a good thing that we, we've talked about the fitness and that tonight because. Me personally, you know, I I started eating a lot, coming to lockdown, and I, I was eating a lot. I put on a lot of weight, and I started getting a bit self conscious about it. Do you know, what I mean? and I, I thought to myself this week or so ago, this is where my addiction wants me. It wants me not really wanting to go out and mingle. It wants me feeling a bit shit about myself. That's my addiction knocking on the door. And then since then, you know, eating a bit better, having a bit of focus at the gym, like That's start it. dropping a few pounds and. You feel you f so yeah. It, it's important to go to the gym and get and get your head working yeah. and your focus. Yeah, it is, and the thing is, Paul Willie lives in Blackburn, so you probably see a lot of him because we, Willie starts going to that gym down there. Do you know what I mean? And it, and it's yeah, nice because you can build. Like Willie came with me to the boxing to watch Cara box, and he had a brilliant night. Do you know what I mean? It were a real atmosphere, weren't it, Willie? It were brilliant. Yeah. So it was real. It was real. Nice to meet you in person, mate. Be nice to meet you in person. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, D McChrystal, I love D. So D is Les, is my friend Les, who I always talk about Les, Les on the estate. It's like uh, it, it, we could have our own show on this estate. Mm -hmm. So that's his niece who's watching. Right, I found the song. So this song's just for everybody, anyone that's watching, anyone that's feeling shit with mental health, feeling suicidal, drugs, alcohol. So I think I can do it now. So let me try again. Just bear with me. Oh, do you know? Can you see that? Can everyone see that? Yes. Yeah. Right. right, so this is for... Right. So I'm going to play this for everyone, and then we will... Is it on big screen now? Right. If you can all read that. Who sings it? Um, Brianne Marine or something, Justin King. Are you ready? I'm going to play. It's the wall, I'll 
still be standing If I crumble till I'm gone If I cry until I'm numb When the lights go out, that's when I Depression, I'm feeling anxiety It's a struggle but normal I try to be But it's hard when there's no one who got at me All these people who don't understand Judging inside, telling you be a man Battling demons, I sink in the sand Pop through with these hands, not shit hit the fan My thoughts suicidal, friends that I thought was my homies But they just done turning my rivals Right hand on the bible, this one for the people Going through things, they ain't treating us equal We all are the same, gotta hold on cause it's all in our brain Gotta stay strong even though we in pain Gotta have faith even though that sometimes That we feeling the same I know that it's hard I know that there's nights that we pray in the God I know that there's times that we feel like we lost And we wanna give up, just know that you won You stare at your phone, have you won't leave me alone I do this shit on my own Nobody care about me when I'm gone Sick of the people that tell me I'm wrong For everyone going through things In this battle of demons Just know that there's light at the end of the tunnel Whenever we feel like we bleeding We gotta just keep moving forward Everything has a reason Just know that we gotta stay strong And for all of our friends and the people that need us Jay. If I stumble, if I fall, if I, fall. If I ever lose it all, if I lose it. Yeah. Yeah. when my back hits the wall, I'll still be standing. Right. If I crumble till I'm gone, if I cry until I'm numb, when the lights go out, that's when I. One is the one right in front of you Just believe you can do what you wanna do And you see that the moment's in front of you Know there's times when you feel like it's dark Just know that there's light, you just gotta keep up Gotta keep pushing, no, never give up I've been through the struggle, I've been through the rut I've been through the storm, been through the pawn Been through the pain, well I feel like I'm gone Panic attacks, wishing we wasn't born Hospital beds while I stare at the walls What's happened to me? What's good in my life, but this happened to be? Wish I could go back to live wild and free Wish I could go back to the times Well I feel like this not even me I know that it's hard I know that there's nights that we pray in the God I know that there's times that we feel like we lost And we wanna give up, just know that you won You stare at your phone, everyone leave me alone I do this shit on my own Nobody care about me when I'm gone Sick of the people that tell me I'm wrong For everyone going through things In this battle of demons Just know that there's light at the end of the tunnel Whenever we feel like we bleeding We gotta just keep moving forward Everything has a reason Just know that we gotta stay strong And for all of our friends and the people that need us Jay. If I stumble, if I fall, if I ever lose it all When my back hits the wall, I'll still be standing If I crumble till I'm gone, if I cry until I'm numb When the lights go out, that's when I So I just thought I'd play that. I thought it was quite um it's quite a good song. Um and also it's about, you know, people feeling lost and it just shows honestly, I always I always emphasize this. It it takes great, great strength to be in recovery. It 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 just you are you have to be a warrior. You have to because like I say, you, when you're being stripped down to the basics and feeling all that. Wow. pain and everything without having anything to block it out you know that's hardcore 
So, you know, to anybody who wants support, help, you know, reach out, Red Rose Recovery, you know, you can join us on um, Facebook, the Lancashire User Forum, that helps us, you know, know what support there is out there, what groups we can join. And I just want to thank everybody. There's been so many people. Um, Wendy has put amazing stuff you guys are doing, been so good listening. Thank you, Paul and Willie, for your life stories, inspirational uh, Katniss, you're all amazing. Love and light sent you all. Beautiful song. Love you, um, Amazon Warrior Woman. Oh. Um, perfect song, Emily. Thank you, all the speakers. You are rock stars. Emily Stewart, thank you for fetching this sassy love to us all. Um, Dom, I'll send you which song it is. Um, I can't remember who sang it, so I will. And Andy, I'll um, I'll put I'll put the song. I'll put it on Red Rose. I'll put the um the link on onto Red Rose, the uh, YouTube song. But I think it's safe to say we're going to um, switch off. Willie, do you want to say anything? No, I just um, want to say basically everyone keep as well as you can and I hope you will all be okay. Thank you. Stuart, is there anything you want to say, my love? Yeah, uh, particularly... Uh in relation to the song that you've just put on uh strong i know that looks really cheesy but listen we can do cheesy we're all right with cheesy and and like i say you know if there's one person that's still struggling out there that's still using whatever if they can watch this and they just get that little glimmer of hope because we we love you we don't judge we've all been there so you know i really hope that people can reach out and get some support and just know that we're all here for you and if we can do it you lot can do it definitely so yeah. i'm going to say good night to everybody but thank you so much um and thank you for everyone that's been on and um i'll say good night thank good you night. very much bye everybody bye 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 thank you